This is the fight that I wasn't looking forward to today. It's called Flaming Demon. And like, don't let his big dopey eyes fool you. It's the big dopey sword on his back that we should be worried about. But I'm gonna give the Viking faction another shot. They've done a pretty good job fighting their way into Valhalla. Maybe they'll be able to do it again. Or maybe they're gonna piss this thing off and it's gonna undergo its Sailor Moon transformation and we're screwed. Yeah, I'm willing to bet you guys wish you wore a shirt now. Nothing says welcome to hell like burnt nipples. Oh my god, they killed it. What? What's up guys, welcome back to Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, where last time we managed to use a whole bunch of sharpened sticks and heavy rocks to beat the forces of heaven and their time-controlling mechanical angels. Which can only mean today we're gonna have to use something equally stupid to try to beat the forces of hell and whatever monstrosities they have in store for us. We'll start things off at a level called Sudden Blades, which I assume is referring to all of the blind blinky boys that we can see in the back over this spiky broad lady's shoulders. We've also got a couple of the Mega Man mad mechanics, as well as the cyberpunk cosplay cactus, I don't know. like. These units are so incredibly weird, but it means there's gonna be a whole lot of different moving parts for us to consider when formulating a strategy. I'm gonna shoot them. Yeah, I'll put it this way. If guns were like Pokemon, then bullets would be super effective against organs. I get the feeling that type advantage should come in really handy when these idiots teleport behind us and get immediately Swiss cheesed. There we go. All right, now, guys, how do you feel about fire? Or more specifically, fire being shot from the hands of a guy with way more tentacle backpacks than sanity? Oh, thank God. For a second there, I thought they were gonna walk away from bathing in hellfire, but fall to the lady with a spiky hat. Next up, we have a level called Searing Vacuum, where once again, they've got some similar units, a whole lot of fire, but now they're introducing the Void Cultist, which some of you guys may remember can control a ring of fire. And I don't mean the Johnny Cash song or like what happens to your butthole after a cheesy gordita crunch. No, we're gonna have like a literal wall of flames make our life very difficult. I think we had found last time that the horses are just a little bit too fast to get singed by those shenanigans. They also have a hard time on this map considering there are a bunch of holes all over the place, but we'll just hope for the best. <laughs> those firewalls are... Yeah, not doing anything, they just kind of pitter out. It's the mechanics, however, that are just gonna flamethrower us down. Why did I send out horses against flamethrowers? What is wrong with me? We're gonna try something a little bit unorthodox here because I am surrounded, so my options are limited, but I'm gonna make a tight formation of balloon archers here in the middle and then try to protect them with some painters. I don't even really care what they do. They don't need to kill anything. They just need to absorb a little bit of fire, waste a little bit of time. Just delay long enough for the balloon archers to be able to put the enemy in limbo. We should be able to send them up is there no sending things up in hell? I haven't actually looked up down here before. Is there a sky or a roof above us? I guess they're about to find out. Oh, oh, okay, guys, you, you gotta focus the cultists. We don't want them raising their hands in the air. There is a roof, we're not trying to raise it. We're just trying to send the enemy into space. I just used helium balloons against fire and spiky enemies. Again, what am I thinking? This is getting dangerously close to the point of being embarrassing, so we're gonna try hard mode. I'm gonna use a couple of pikemen because they should be able to one-shot the void cultist. And in case one of them misses, then I'm gonna have a backup just in case. I'm also gonna have barrel rollers back here. They should be able to evaporate these pointed idiots. And then we'll back everything up with some poachers and hope for the best. Come on, guys. Uh, okay, we killed one of them. One of them isn't enough, though, because it means everyone else is gonna just bake through our ranks. Guys, come on. 
Here's an interesting idea. We don't know if the Void Cultist symbol can hit units that fly. So maybe I could use something like Cupid, just get a whole bunch of them, and by a whole bunch, I mean half a dozen. I don't have nearly enough money for this right now! But hopefully they'll be able to avoid the Void Cultists entirely, and never mind the symbol can elevate. All right, that's gonna be a problem, but we've got a whole bunch of gross underworld love and some crazy humping happening right now. Hopefully that'll keep you guys safe, at least for a little bit. Come on, I know you're just a bunch of stupid adults in diapers, but I really don't want to see you get torched. Oh my God. Desperate times call for desperate measures, so I'm gonna call in some favors from the North Pole and get four present elves down here. And then I'll protect them the best way I know how, by throwing waves upon waves of hobbit bodies at the enemy. <laughs> Just drown them in little corpses to hopefully buy enough time for our present elves to spread a little Christmas cheer. I would like uh, a giant, or a reaper, or a god, or the dark peasant. Yep, you know what, that would work perfectly, I would say. You see, you just gotta be a good little girl or boy, and then you'll get a couple of the strongest unit in the game. <laughs> what are the odds? Moving on to a level called Scorching Void, where once again, they've got a whole bunch of fire. I know, shocking for down here. But they've also got the Infernal Whip, which, I mean, joke's on them. I'm just gonna find myself a unit that's into that kind of thing. Deadeye, I swear I'm using you because the enemy is really far away and you can one-shot just about anything in the game. It's not because you're one of the few lady units in the game and I think you might be kind of kinky. But that being said, do chains and whips excite you? Because if that's the case, then we might be in a lot of trouble because I didn't see them. Yeah, I didn't think to ask her if she was into having a dozen dudes just randomly appear in her bum. I don't have nearly enough money to deal with all this right now. Look, I'm thinking we might be able to get away with using a ballista, and it'll be responsible for killing everything that doesn't move like a fart in the wind. But then, if I wanted to use something like the hoplite, I don't know if I should put them in front of the ballista, or behind it. Because I think these things just dive the back line, don't they? Yeah, they do, and they spread out. So they're smart enough to take out my siege weapons and my protection. They're gonna kill everything before the actual problems show up. You've gotta be kidding me. Okay, boys. We got five Spartans getting absolutely roasted. I don't get it. Why is this so much more difficult than heaven? Hold up a minute. If they're gonna come to us, then why don't we just let them? Like, if they want a dog pile on top of a barrel roller, then be my guest. And then maybe we could use the high ground to our advantage? We very rarely have high ground in tabs, so I don't know how this is going to work. They might be too stupid to use it, but if you guys stay up there and shoot down at the enemy, then you might be safe. So long as the barrel rollers actually manage to kill everything, there we go! <laughs> Flawless, and now you guys have no reason to turn around because there's nothing behind you, so you can just hang out up here and hopefully not have the symbol come up here. I don't know if they can reach you. I think you might actually be safe. Oh my god, this is ingenious. I mean, some of them are gonna fall down and break their ankles, but that's a fine sacrifice. <laughs> Where are we going? Oh, okay, there's one left. <laughs> you guys have to be able to win this. Come on, I gave you every single advantage in life. All you have to do is shoot him, please. There we go, oh, that feels good. Now we have a level called the Pit of Annihilation. Like they're laying it on extra thick. They wanna be intimidating, but I was pretty underwhelmed by this thing. The Death Dealer, I think it was called, but it just kind of slices at people with neon lights. Not all that scary. If anything, I was more terrified by the fact that the Sentinels are wearing a corset and have a fat ass. We got them completely surrounded, boys, wielding the big guns. And then I'm also thinking that we might want some shield bearers and some sarissas. Just a little off center. I want to make sure that we don't accidentally have them get hit in the back by a sharpened telephone pole. 
And then I also want to make sure to save enough money for a couple of archers. I don't know if they're going to be smart enough to stay up there. Actually, I'd be willing to bet that they won't, but I really liked how things worked last time, so maybe they can do it again. Just shoot. They're staying put. Okay, this is good. So long as we can get our ballista to shoot the important units. Okay, uh, slight problems. This is why I put you guys in the high ground, because it buys you as much time as possible to defend yourselves from the neon blades. Okay, that that hurts. Yep, that, that hurts a little bit. You see, I'm just saying that it's not all that impressive. They just kind of stab and then explode. <laughs> Good shots. Anyone left? Maybe one or two? You should be able to shoot once or twice. Don't go and try to be a hero. Hit the one that's in front of you first. Great. Now, you don't need to move forward. Let them come to you. Oh my god, I need to have a talk with these drivers, I swear. Aim. Fire. Beautiful. Couldn't have asked for things to go better. Well, doesn't this just look like a whole bunch of nonsense? It's called Abyssal Storm. And like, I don't think we really need to worry about the Shadow Walkers anymore. We know they're gonna kamikaze onto a barrel roller as long as I put one in the back, but the Tempest Gin is a different story. Or, or Tempest Lich? Tempest Mage? Either way, the thing that's gonna open up lightning storms in hell to roast us. I don't know how to fight it. You can't get a headshot on it. It doesn't have a head. Its neck looks like an anime girl's butthole. Well, first things first, let's go ahead and give these shadow walkers a very warm welcome. And then uh, again, I really want to try something like the dead eye. I know we haven't had a lot of success with her so far, but she should be able to one shot just about anything, including a tempest lich. Except I want to make sure that they don't open up the storms on my important units, so. Maybe we'll just give them something that's irresistible to blow up. <laughs> Nobody can avoid frying a hobbit, right? Oh, okay, barrel rollers. Beautiful. <laughs> I love it, man. It's flawless, but you guys really need to pick your shots now. Come on. Oh, okay. Uh, you didn't manage to one-shot the cultist, but you're gone. You're, you're, you're absolutely gone. That's not good. You guys are hitting them, but they're not dying. Okay, now they're dying. This is good. This is all right. Just got to make sure not to get hit by any storms. They're going to build up a little bit of static, but they're so far away. There's no way you guys are going to miss. Okay, for a second there, I thought they missed, but I, I guess it is two shots to some of these units. You having a hard time with the chain? You're coming over here to find one of the liches roaming around, just going for a scenic walk. <laughs> all right, well, lock on and... Again, that looked like a miss. Dead eye, my ass. <laughs> okay, thank you for at least working for once. I really needed that, especially against these things. Next up, we have a level called Strike of Destruction. They're getting real edgy now, but it's just more of the same thing. Like, we have a strategy that works against these units, and I want to use it again, but I also want to deviate so that the video is entertaining, so... Maybe we'll try something stupid first. How about something large and stupid and fuzzy? I don't think Snuffy cares all that much about a little rain. I am going to use my barrel rollers again, though, just in case. <laughs> something like that? Okay, I think we got rid of everything very, very quickly. Now, Snuffy, all you have to do is take care of the... The Deathbringer, or the Edgelord, or, or whatever the Christ he is. The, the guy who's dancing with the glow sticks. Just try not to care about the weather. Come on, you lived in an ice age. A little rain should be nothing. Oh, we might actually have a bit of a problem here. I knew we were surrounded, but I didn't realize their flank was this strong. They've got units up here, and over here. And some back here, which I might actually have the Reaper deal with? You think you'd be up to that task, buds? And if something manages to teleport on you, then I don't think you're really gonna care. And that'll leave us enough money for Thor. <laughs> Thor makes quick work of the liches. You know, they're trying to use his shtick. <laughs> He's the God of Thunder. You don't get to take out the God of Thunder with a little bit of electricity. I'm just hoping that he can lay the hammer down on some of these other guys or not. Grim, how's it going? Not 
particularly well. Okay, well, you can turn all of them into decorations, but I don't know how I feel about this 2v1. <laughs> Come on, Grim, you got this. I believe in you. You might not be able to puncture any bombs, but you've got the scythe. Show them who's boss. Here we go. Oh, 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 watch the lightning, watch the lightning. Careful, careful. They missed. Can they do that? Does he actually need to be struck? Please tell me yes. Yes, you can actually puncture them. Perfect. I am so happy he's on my side down here. Things are getting real weird down here now. This is a level called Root of Carnage. And they're just spread out all over the place. Like they're all over the map and it's split horizontally instead of vertically. Again, I really just want to get the Reaper on the job. I mean, he knows the place well. He can one-shot just about all of their units, except for the Death Dealer, who we might be able to simply blow up. I can't imagine he's going to be dealing too much death after this. Hold on a second. We're about to launch a kamikaze run against some kind of underworld blade shaman. Could we maybe get this guy a bigger exploding barrel? Did you pick the smallest one in the hopes you would survive? Because that's not how this works. Get in there and blow your ass up. And preferably his as well. Okay, don't worry, Grim. That just means that we softened him up for you, right? Could you maybe finish the job real quick? Oh, come on. Don't let him get you with the lights. Oh, we won. Wait, for a second there, I, I, I thought we lost because it was so quick. It's like I said, he just instantly kills so many things that they don't stand a chance. I really didn't think I was going to find myself saying this today, but maybe we can give the forces of hell a fighting chance. Okay, we won't use the Grim Reaper. Yes, because I, I think that they didn't use the Tempest Lich, so it's only fair. Uh, I want to try a, a bit of a boots on the ground attack. We use a real army. We're going to have some Jarls. They're going to be leading headbutters in the front and brawlers behind them. I don't think we want to use ice archers because we have yet to actually freeze something today. <laughs> Berserkers can hop in and we could even get a couple of Valkyries down here. Yeah, okay. I know you guys wanted to go to Valhalla, but this is going to have to be close enough. <laughs> you earn your place. I'm sure you can do a decent enough job swarming them. Is this actually working right now? I mean, we got a lot of dead units, but there were way more of us than there were them. We seem to be surviving. Get back up there. Do not fall off the edge. Thank you. <laughs> Since when do they do what I tell them to? We're trick shotting on them. This guy's holding his axe behind his back and just kind of thrusting at the enemy. Guys, you got to swing. There you go. That, that is a little bit better, I suppose. I think we may have actually won this. Is that guy alive? Not anymore! Way to go, Viking faction! I can't believe that worked! This is the fight that I wasn't looking forward to today. It's called Flaming Demon. And like, don't let his big dopey eyes fool you. It's the big dopey sword on his back that we should be worried about. But I'm gonna give the Viking faction another shot. They've done a pretty good job fighting their way into Valhalla. Maybe they'll be able to do it again. Or maybe they're going to piss this thing off and it's going to undergo its Sailor Moon transformation and we're screwed. <laughs> yeah, I'm willing to bet you guys wish you wore a shirt now. Nothing says welcome to hell like burnt nipples. Oh my god, they killed it. What? <laughs> he, he just whacked it in the ass with his axe. Are you kidding me? That was so anticlimactic. I'm dumbfounded. I'm, I'm legitimately dumbfounded. Yarl, what have you done? I don't know what kind of split cheek reconstructive surgery they had to do, but he's back up and it looks like this is Hell's final stand because everyone is here all of a sudden. I would have never guessed that Hell's one weakness would be large, burly men with bear skin wearing bear skins. <laughs> but evidently that's the case, so I guess we might as well not mess with success. Actually, how about we use everything that we've learned over the course of the episode? Because I think this is going to be their final stand. So we know that the Viking faction is real strong. We could put some Jarls with headbutters in the front and then brawlers backing them up. 
I want to try berserkers up here because they might be able to jump over at the liches. I don't know if they can make that leap, but if they can, that's going to be super powerful. If they can't, then maybe the Valkyrie can? Technically, they don't need to leap. They should just be able to fly over. And then if I cut down on the fodder just a little bit, we might be able to get the Reaper in there. Oh, oh, and then uh, we also need to get ourselves at least one barrel roller. <laughs> Gotta make sure to have a friend in the back. That's everything, right? So, hopefully, we've got our advantage. Perfect. Way to go, barrel roller. <laughs> Looks like they teleported up to the berserkers as well, but we didn't get the lich. Oh, that's a problem. Yeah, the lich is, is gonna hurt. It, it, it's gonna manage to give the demon a little bit of time, but Grim, you're not afraid of a demon, are you? That is a big friggin' demon. It is like twice the size of Grim, and there are so many diarrhea Christmas lights on screen right now. <laughs> I love that term. I, I have absolutely no shame stealing that from girlfriend reviews when used in proper context. Okay. Well, it looks like everything we've learned is worth bupkis. Now hear me out, they may have weather manipulation and rings of fire and the literal king of hell, but maybe we could try an M1 Abrams? <laughs> it should be able to do something down here, right? And then we could get uh, Thor up here and Thor over there and hope for the best. <laughs> you guys are gonna teleport behind the tank, but that doesn't seem all that smart. If anything, the tank should just keep driving around and turning. It does a lot more swinging and smushing than it does shooting. Would like to see a little bit more shooting, but that being said, it's doing a damn good job smushing. <laughs> keep on smushing. If you could maybe shoot the king, that'd be great. Uh, Thor, you, you still up somewhere, bud? Okay, we got one Thor over here. Seems to have taken care of things. Two Thors are still up. All right. Wait a second. Did we actually take out the king? Oh my god. He never even got the chance to transform. The tank actually drove over him. <laughs> I, I can't believe something that stupid would work. It's perfect. All right, you know what? I think that's going to be it for this episode of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, guys. And we managed to beat the forces of hell using some very strange methods, but that means next time I can either take control of the good faction or the evil faction and then use them to try to beat every other faction in the game. You guys have to leave a comment letting me know which one you want to see, and if you do want to see more, be sure to leave a like in the video. Maybe I'll return to control a demon or a time-controlling mech angel soon. But thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.